Hello, and welcome to an exciting session of using Blender 3.5 for video editing. Today we're going to be using the compositor to get rid of the background of some footage. This footage that I have here of this ant that's making its way across a tiled floor. Now, in previous videos, what I've showed you is how you can create a mask which you can then apply on your footage and then you would have to kind of track it over time so that the mask is always following along with your subject. And that works, but it does take a bit of effort to create the mask and to get it to follow your subject as it moves. If your footage allows for it, then you can use these alternative methods to isolate the subject so you have just the subject and the background is removed and then you can do whatever you want with that subject. Like having a different background switched on, underneath it to make it look like the subject was actually somewhere else. So for today's session we are going to use a technique which I'm calling the static background removal method. There's probably a proper name for it but that's what we're going to go with here. And what it requires is that our footage always has a fixed background. So the camera never moves and the background never changes. So that the only thing that really does change inside of the entire video clip is the subject. So what do we require besides that? It's also important that the subject is a different color from the background. Uh, the background over which the subject is traveling through. So in this case we have this black ant and as we go around, as I scrub through, you can see uh, everywhere it travels around is more or less looking different in color compared to the subject itself. The reason the color is important is because color is how this works. And if the colors are different, then it is considered the subject, it will be included. If the colors look about the same, it's considered the background and it will be removed. Okay, so those are the things that are important. And so now you know, and now let's get started. As you can see here, inside of the video sequence editor, I've got two markers. One is called reference, right over here. I made the decision that this frame right here looks like a good representation of what the background looks like without the subject in the shot at all. Now this second marker is where the subject starts to come into view and it makes its full run through from, from bottom to top and this is the part of the video that we will be focusing on. So how do you actually get started with this kind of job? Well, for me, I always start inside of the video sequence editor in our video editing workspace. I load up the file uh, like we have here, and uh, I do it here because it's easy to scrub through and figure out where uh, do you need to do the work and what is the best reference frame to use. And once I have the reference frame selected, and in this case, it is uh, this one right here. Uh, I think I need to jump back to get to that exact spot. There we go. I have selected frame 730. I always put a marker there so it's easy to get back to it as I need to. In this case, I already have it set up, but just to show you how that's done, I'm going to delete it and I will do it again. So with your time cursor set where you want the reference frame to be, you go to the marker menu and you say add marker and from here you can also go again to the marker menu and say rename marker and I will call this reference and there we go. I am now done in the video sequence editor. We can move on to work in the compositor but before we do that the next thing I like to do is to create a different scene specifically for all of the compositor work. Just because I like to have a nice little trail of how my work has progressed and plus it keeps things distinct between working in the video sequence editor and the compositor. So I'll do that now. I'm going to go up to this button here, 
click that and choose full copy. By doing that, I have a total copy of the original scene, including these markers. That's the very important part because uh, we will be working with this scene. What we don't need are these strips here. So I will press A to select them all and then press X to delete. And then I will go back up here and change this. I'll, I will just call this compositor because that's what it's going to be for. Okay, so we have our prepared copy of the scene. So we've got the resolution and frame range all set up, frame rate, everything's gonna match. We are good to start with the compositing. So let's click the plus sign here to add that workspace. And under VFX, choose compositing. And we've talked about this before, this workspace, so I won't go into too much detail here. What I will do right now is adjust these a bit. I want to bring this up and press the home key so that I can see these markers. And I'll hide dope sheet because I don't need that. And now we are good to get started here. So within the node editor, we will click on use nodes. And here we can see we have the two nodes that always comes when you turn on nodes. Render layers, I'll left click on that and press X to delete because we don't need it. What we do need to start are two separate input nodes. The input node for the movie file itself and then an image node which will again use that same movie file but we just want to pick out a single reference frame from it. So let's start with the movie file. I will press Shift A and go to input movie clip left click to drop that and then I will click the open button here and pick my file okay there it is and because we're at our reference frame there is no ant in that picture it's incredibly small to see so let's go ahead and press control shift and left click here so that we can see it as our backdrop now that is hard to see, so I will click over here on view and choose fit. Okay, there we go, now we can see better. Bring that back to node. All right, and I'll just push this over a bit. And we have our movie clip. The next thing we need is the image node. So let's go ahead and press shift A, input, image. And I will bring this over here left click to place and again I will click on the open it's a little bit hidden there so let's span this out there now you can see that says open I'll click on that and I will again open up my same movie file now let's look at the options we have here and you know what maybe this time what I'll do is I'll use the node section over here I'll expand out properties Maybe pull that out a little bit more so we can see and I'll scroll down over here. So uh, the thing to know here is that most of the stuff you can leave alone. The only thing you need to touch is this offset field. This offset field is supposed to be the frame number uh, minus one of uh, what you want as your reference frame. So here you can see I've got my reference marker at frame 730. So what I'll do here is just type in 729. That is going to be my reference frame. So I made that change and you can see here that uh, it still looks about the same. That's because the first frame is probably about the same as this one. But this was the reference frame that I had selected and I wanted to show you how to do that. Um, just to prove that this actually works, let's click over here and make sure that we can see an ant. Uh, yeah, there's that ant there at frame 1042. And if I uh, zoom in over here, you can see there's no sign of the ant there. But if I look down over here on the movie clip, yeah, that little speck there, that's the ant. So this is working as intended. And if I were to change this to frame 1041, 
Um, yeah, there's that little black speck there. That's the ant. Uh, let's go ahead and undo that though. Bring it back to 729. Okay, so there we go. We have now our image node and our movie clip node. So let's jump back to the reference node because I want to show you what things will look like once we add the the big player in this particular technique, which is called the difference key node. And so let's do that. We'll press Shift A again to get to this add menu. And this is under the mat group. And here it is over here, difference key. So I'll click that, and then I will just place it right here. And let's look at what things we have here. We'll zoom that in. You can see we've got two input sockets for two different images because that's how this thing is going to work. It's going to compare one image to the other. And because we are going to feed it this one uh, reference and it's always the same frame, uh, so Blender will be taking the current frame uh, at all times and it'll be comparing against that same reference frame. All right, so we have that. Let's jump this back to. 7.30. And now let's go ahead and connect the dots. So our uh, image node here, click and drag to this first socket. It doesn't matter which one goes where because they're, uh, they're basically paired up, they're treated the same. And then to our movie clip, the image output socket there will connect to the input socket on the difference key. And that's it, we're configured. You can see we have two options here, tolerance and fall off. So far with the testing I've done, these defaults seem to work well. When it comes to working in the compositor, definitely there are times when you will want to uh, change these different settings, but the power of the compositor comes with uh, connecting and creating a workflow. So each node, you will use for its specific purpose and the result of that you can pass on to a different node for further uh, processing and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I've got these things connected but one thing I wanted to do before we do anything else because I can't remember if I've mentioned this in past videos is that you can rename these things because you can see here I've got the the movie clip node here called movie clip the image node is now called ant.mp4, which might be a little bit confusing when you first see it. So what I like to do is uh, rename them sometimes where, where it makes sense. So with this one, um, I'm going to go over here and click on label and I'll call this reference image, press enter. So there you go. So that, now it's called reference image and I like it so much better than ant.mp4. Because yes, it is ant MP4, but it's like frame 730, my reference frame for this project. Okay, so we've got all of that. Now, let's take a look and see what this difference key is producing when we feed it the reference frame and the movie file. So we'll press Control Shift Left Click on difference key, and now. What does it look like? Let me move these things aside. It looks like a whole bunch of nothing. And that's exactly what we expect because right now we're still on the reference frame. Nothing should be different. The reference frame and this current frame we're at within the movie clip, they are exactly the same. And because they're the same, everything gets removed. So this is great. Uh, so that's what the image looks like. In terms of um, what the mat looks like, Let's again press Control Shift left click and it is total blackness, which means if you apply this as a mask to the movie file, then everything gets wiped out. So yes, this is what we want. Now let's go ahead and jump ahead a bit to where the ant is visible. So I'll go over here and what do we see? Let's shift this around a bit. The ant is now in the shot and we can clearly see that that is the ant. But there's all these other white specks. That is the fact that the background has changed slightly in appearance. It's probably that the lighting changed just a little bit. So now 
they look a little bit different. Because these are all essentially just little tiny specks, we have a few different nodes that we can apply to try to clean that up. But before we do that, I would like to change my workspace so that I can see the before and after. I did show this in a prior video, so I'll just try and do this really quickly right now. I'm going to take these two spots that we have here. So this was the uh, outliner. I'm going to change that to image editor, switch that over to render result and press, oh, and then I have to connect. So, cause what I'm going to do is I'm going to have in this top right corner, this will be like the before and then the bottom right corner will be the after. So that will be always looking at our viewer node. Uh, and the before in this case will be the original movie file. So I'll connect that up like so. I will then go here to render and render image. And there we go. So now let's zoom these out a bit so we can see it better. So that is our after. There we go. And then this one is the before. So this is what we're dealing with here. There's our ant, and there you can see that it'll clearly make it through in, uh, in processing, but we have all this extra speckling. And what do you know, the way we can start cleaning this up is by using a node that's called despeckle. So let's go ahead and add that in now. So right after the difference key, what we need to do is we need to clean up this mat. So I will press shift A to add, and it is under, I think, filter. Yes, there it is, despeckle. So I'll click that, and then I will just stick it over this line. The line will change white. That means it's going to be popped in here and then reconnected. So there we go. As soon as we did that, you might have noticed that some of those specs went away. This is the time where you might want to make use of these uh, different options here to see if you can improve the output. So I have done this before um, and what I found worked well because normally you would just you can click and drag and adjust the numbers and see what works so we bring it up to one and then now you actually have more speckles than before. I think what I did was I took it all the way down to zero. Oh there we go yeah you can see there's a lot less now and neighbor, I think, reduce it to 0.1. No, definitely not 0.1. Look, that, that creates a whole bunch more. So maybe let's just go the other direction. So let's go up to, that's this is the default 0.5. Let's increase to 0.6. Yep, it's getting rid of more, getting rid of more. And then 0.8, oh, 0.8, I can see it got rid of some, but then it added others. So let's bring it back down to 0.7. So these are the settings we'll deal with here, uh, 0, 0.7, and we left the factor as 1. Okay, so we got rid of some, there's still a lot left. And the good news is there is another node that we can use multiple times over to clean it up even more. So that node is called the dilate slash erode node. So let's add that now. So shift A to bring up this menu. It is also under filter. And there it is here, dilate slash erode. Click. And again, I'll just place it here and let Blender automatically connect everything up. So what does this node do? Um, it will basically make things larger or smaller. So dilation and erosion. So I was really excited to learn about this uh, when I started uh, exploring this technique. And I have to refer to my notes here, because this is something my, my colleague shared with me at work. Uh, the idea here is that we're going to use this note twice. First time we're going to use it, we're going to do an erosion. We're going to make things smaller uh, and then follow that by dilation. And that's called opening and it is useful for removing noise. Essentially what we're seeing here, all these little dots, that's noise and we're trying to get rid of it. So let's go ahead and do that now and you can see it in action. And uh, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in over here 
do a box zoom so we can see a little bit better how this is going to work. So with this dilate slash erode node, um, it has different modes. And so far, I've only really worked with the step node, and it's done what I need to do, typically. Now here is the key thing, distance. So if you want to erode, then you use a negative number, and that's what we're going to do here. And if you wanted to dilate or grow, then you use a positive number. So watch what happens if I just click here and then set the distance to negative one. Look at that. Just about everything disappeared, really. If we look over here at the full thing, I don't see much. There, there's a little bit of specs. We could go more, but you, you can also see by doing that, we've also uh, made some negative changes to the mask for the ant. So if we keep going, we might get rid of all of that other noise, but look, now the shape of the ant is terrible. So let's not do minus two, let's just stick to minus one. So we still have these little bits of noise here, but the good news is we still have most of the ant, including its legs and antenna as well. The next part of this is to restore, so we got rid of most of the noise, but now we want to restore the shape of the mask uh, before this processing. So what we're going to do is take a copy of this dilate erode and change the distance to plus one. That way we're kind of, so we did a little, we got, we went minus one and then we did plus one, so now we're back to zero. So essentially no change except the, there was a big change, the noise is gone. So let's go ahead and do that. So with this node selected, I'll press Shift D to duplicate. So there, now I have a copy of it by pressing Shift D. And again, I'll just place it right here. And it's set to minus one, so I need to use the buttons here, or I could type in a value to change it to plus one. We do get a bit of noise again, but you know what, it's a lot better than it was before. Now, at this point, I kind of forgot how bad it was. So what we can do is make use of uh, our setup here and change the, uh, the composite node to now point to the despeckle so that we, we can get a, a better idea about the before and after. So there's that composite node. Let's connect up the image output socket over to composite and that's what it looked like before. Right. So it looked like that before, and now it looks like this. So much better, still not perfect, but good enough. And actually, I think I forgot to mention, we can always do other things too. Like if you already had that mask from the previous uh, videos we worked on, you can combine those things. You can take the, the matte results here that we have uh, and combine that with a mask to focus just on this piece. We're not gonna cover that today. Uh, I'm not ready to show that, but that is something you can do. So probably in a follow-up video, I'll show that. Anyway, so let's keep working. If I zoom in over here, you can see a, a couple of spots here where uh, there's there are holes in the subject. So if we were to use this in its current state, you would see uh, tiny little specks here uh, when we have our final result where we don't actually get to see our subject because there's uh, a black spot here, it's not filled in. So let me refer back to my notes. The next thing we're going to do is something that's called closing, which is when we do a dilation and then erosion, and that's for closing small holes inside of the foreground objects. Great, so what does that actually mean here? It means we do the same thing we just did in reverse. So first, what we had was a negative value followed by the, the positive equivalent. That was for the opening. We're gonna take that and reverse it. So let's drag this out. And again, we're gonna do a Shift D here. And this time, we're going the other way. So we're doing 
a plus one followed by a negative one. So change that to a negative one. Okay, so what have we got again? Let's just recap. So we have our two inputs, the image and the movie. Put that into the difference key. We did a despeckle, but that wasn't good enough. So then we did these two, which is our um, opening. So we got rid of most of the noise with these two. And now, by using this pair, we have effectively closed those holes in our subject. So that is fantastic. That is most of what we need to do. Now the only thing you might notice, and this is something that I sometimes do and I sometimes don't, if we zoom in even further on this, you'll see that the body of our subject, of the ant, is looks fully white. But these various bits here, uh, that's a dark gray. That means that if we take this as is, this uh, piece here will be slightly transparent. I, I don't like it when it's like that. I would rather it be either fully opaque or fully transparent. So the last thing we're going to do uh, is add something else, and this is under the converter. It's a math node. So hopefully you like math. The good news is, even if you don't like math, the math here is not hard uh, because Blender does the math for us. Uh, what we're going to do is click on this, because this is the math node right now, it's called add, because that's the kind of operation we're performing. Uh, I don't want add. I want to do a comparison, a greater than. So we pick greater than, and now you'll see with the default value of 0.5, so anything that was mostly on the light side is now fully light. And anything that was mostly dark is actually completely missing. So I think now we're missing that piece. Let me see if I reduce the threshold. Can we bring that back in? There we go, yep. Getting more of it, getting more of it. But let me zoom out a little bit because I, I don't want to get too much of the additional noise. Oh yeah, actually, that's bad. That's not bad. Actually, I could live with a few dots as long as I have more of the subject. I'd rather have more of the subject and then some dots rather than less subject but no dots. So this is the value that I will go with. And let's uh, zoom this out a bit and over here as well. So this is what our final product will look like, at least the, the mask component of it. Uh, to finish the job proper, now we need to take our result here, this mat, and apply it to our original movie file. So let's zoom out to see where is that movie file. That movie file is all the way over here. Oh, so far away. Okay, so let's do it this way instead. So I'm going to zoom in again over here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add another node. This is again from Converter. It's called Set Alpha. So click on that and I'll put it right here next to the movie node. And I will connect up image to image. Let's zoom that in a bit. You can see it clearly. There we go. So we have that set. Now, the Alpha is going to be the results of all of that work that we did, which was the difference to the despeckle, to all the dilate slash erodes, and then the greater than. So let's drag this thing over because it needs to connect to this part here, the greater than. That's what we need to do. So we'll click on that. And there we go. Let's point the viewer at this. I'll bring this over a bit and I'll just press control shift left click. And what does that look like? That looks like an ant with most of the background gown. Again, there's the, there are those little specks, uh, but what can you do besides the mask thing I mentioned before, which we will show in a different video. Okay, so this looks good. The real final step here, before we can take this and use it inside of the video sequence editor, for example, 
is to connect this set alpha to the composite node, which is somewhere back over here. There it is. Let's drag that over. Here we go. And then connect the dots. And that is it. We are now done. So at this point, if we wanted to, we could uh, set up some kind of background here and then stick this over that, um, over top of it, so you could see that. What I want to show you instead is taking the results of our work here in the compositor and putting it back into the video sequence editor, because that's where you can do all the other stuff, like combining it with other clips, adding a soundtrack. The video sequence editor is the place to go for that. So. Let's switch back over to video editing. And we are still in the this compositor scene, so let's flip back over to scene. Um, and what we're gonna do is zoom out over here. Oh, that is too zoomed. Uh, jump to the start. And I will press H to mute this. And now I will add. And what are we adding? We are adding the scene, the compositor scene that we were just working on. And let's jump back over here and see what that looks like. It is not showing up. That happens sometimes. So to fix that, we can uh, click on this. There's this little arrow over here. The easier thing to do is press the letter N to pop this out in our preview and go to view and then over here under scene strip display, open that up and change it from solid to rendered. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, this is typically the fix for it. Okay, so there we go. We have our output there. There is that ant. Let's make it a little bit more obvious that things are working well by putting something underneath it. So I'm just grabbing this and I'm shifting it up. That's going to give me space to add. Well, let's just go with a color. So I'll add a color and I'll change this color to green. I'll pretend like it's a green screen. There, we have an ant on a green screen. There you go. So that's it. This is, uh, this is the entire process. As you can see, it's not too much effort. Um, I would say it's easier to do this compared to creating a mask, especially, right, like if I start using the arrow keys to, uh, to kind of move through it, you can see that it's following very well, the ant, for the most part. Like some bits are missing, but it's pretty good. And could you imagine creating a mask to have to deal with this to get rid of the background? You'd have to draw a mask around every single appendage and then as the ant moves around, you'd have to animate it all the time. Like that's just, who would do that? I mean, before I learned about this, then I really wanted to, I might've tried doing that, but knowing about this, what I would rather do in the future, uh, if I'm gonna create my own uh, uh, footage, I would uh, do what I had said at the beginning. I would make sure it's a fixed camera, make sure the background is static, as unchanging as possible, and then film, and then try to deal with it from there. Uh, and of course, make sure that the subject doesn't have any color like the background. Of course, if we were gonna do green screen, then let's just go ahead and do green screen, which we will cover in a future video. But for now, we are done. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do give this a like and consider subscribing so you can see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.